this and that. All right, guys, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about metrics, but the other thing we're going to do is we're going to launch into what is called the combined measurement. This is not a metric measurement. It's the bringing together of a couple metric measurements, and we're going to talk about density. So again, guys, today all you need is the notes page that I gave you. We're going to fill that out really quickly, and then you need a pencil to write with. And then, guys, you will, will need calculators and periodic tables. So grab your calculators, grab your periodic tables out of your notebooks, free them from your notebooks, because you're going to need to be able to manipulate them. And we're gonna get started. If I can find my clicker. There we go. All right, you guys ready to go? Okay, so guys, the first thing that you've got in front of you is this chart. And you'll notice down the left hand side, I have laid out for you the six things that we are going to be measuring in lab this year. Now, across the top, I've given you English. I've given you metric, and then I've given you ideas for what these measurement devices will be. Now guys, please do this with me. Cross out English. We are not going to use English measurements in this class. They're cumbersome. They are hard to deal with. They're inaccurate. We're not going to use them. We are going to use the metric system. So why do I give you the English units? because that's what you guys think in, and it gives you a frame of reference. So guys, we're now gonna work from left to right. We're gonna talk about what are the English units for length, what are the metric units for length. Along the way, I'll try to explain to you where these came from, and then what devices we'll use to make these measurements. Now guys, here's the thing. You can read this table all day long, and you're not gonna learn metrics. In order to learn this, you've actually got to interact with it. So guys, for the, a good part of the rest of the day, we're just going to get you up, get you moving. You're going to be fiddling around with stuff and actually trying to apply some of what you've learned today. So you ready to go? All right, so guys, what are the English units for length? The foot, which was literally based upon the length of a dead king's foot. What about the inch? His thumb. Seriously. But guys, this is where it gets ridiculous. How many inches are in a foot? 12. So certainly if there's 12 inches in a foot, then there's going to be 12 feet in a yard, right? The next bigger measurement. No, there's three. Okay, so if there aren't 12 feet in a yard, certainly there's going to be three yards in the next biggest measurement, which is a mile. No, there's 1,760. And then, guys, from there, we get into ridiculous things like fathoms and knots and furlongs, if you like watching horse races. And there's no relationship between any of these things, so we ain't going to use any of them. But, guys, understand what we do talk about is things like inches and feet and yards. Now, let's get smart about this. Rather than basing measurements upon dead body parts, let's talk about the metric system. Because guys, the metric system has got a logical, unchanging basis for length. It's the meter. Guys, a meter is this long. How on earth did they come up with that? Because it's certainly not a dead king's foot, because that would be a really big foot. That would be like the duffel puds from the C.S. Lewis books. Guys, what on earth, I love those books, what on earth did they use to standardize the meter? It's not the centimeter. Do any of you know? This is cool. This makes me happy on the inside. Guys, a meter is one ten millionth the distance from the North Pole to the equator. That's how they came up with this. And guys, they actually did this like 500 BC. It's fascinating. What they did is they actually took a stick, a little bit taller than a pencil, but they took a stick and they stuck it in the ground and they knew that right at the summer solstice that this stick at the equator would not cast a shadow. We'll talk more about that. Actually, we won't. You can figure that out later. But then what they did is they took another stick and they put it on the other side of, I think, Greece. And then they found out that that stick on that day cast a seven and a half degree shadow. That means that if the earth is round, this stick is seven and a half degrees away from the equator. 
That's pretty good. And then what they did is they figured out the distance between there and the equator, and then they figured if that was 7.2%, that's about a 50th of the way all around the world. They multiplied by 50, came up with this big unit, divided it by 10 million, and that was the meter. <laughs> they did this in togas. This was seriously, like this is before Jesus' times, and they're doing this kind of stuff. They didn't call it the meter back then. It was like the cubit or something like that. But guys, it was the precursor to the meter, and it turns out they were only off by four ten thousandths of a percent. That's pretty good, I know, right? But guys, that's where the meter comes from. So how do we measure the meter? Meter sticks and rulers, right? All right, so those are our units for length. Now, guys, units for volume. Did any of you watch the British Baking Show? Yeah, right, I know. I have sort of a little bit of love for Paul. I don't know why. He just makes me happy. Actually, I like Mary, too, but never mind. All of that to say, guys, if you watch the British Baking Show, you see these poor people pouring over their challenges, but they never say, I need a cup of milk. Even the British have given up on the British system. Guys, they don't think that way. They don't think in our units of volume, which are things like cups and quarts and gallons and barrels and bushels and hogsheads and all of this ridiculous stuff. Teaspoons and tablespoons. Am I the only person that has to ask Siri how many teaspoons are in a tablespoon? I have no idea. It drives me nuts. I'm like taking recipes and scaling them up, and now I need 16 tablespoons of milk, and I'm like, this is going to take forever. I don't know how many cups that is. I got to ask Siri. Guys, this is ridiculous. So we are going to use the uh, metric units for volume and guys let me introduce you to these right now so guys these are they these are the in, or the the metric units for volume this or this if you want to measure little things it's this if you want to measure big things it's this but each of these go by two different names so let me explain this to you guys the first one well actually they both came well let me go back i want them to come in one at a time so you're not confused i just clicked too much there we go. So guys, the first thing, that, the first one of these that you need to know is what is called a milliliter or a centimeter cubed. So here we go. Remember milliliters, graduated cylinders, you measured the volume of the water that you put on the salt. Guys, this right here in my hand is the definition of a milliliter. This is a milliliter. But guys, this is why the metric system is brilliant. This cube is a milliliter. Guess how long it is on each side? A centimeter. So a centimeter times a centimeter times a centimeter, length times width times height, is one centimeter cubed. So if you have a cube one centimeter on a side, a cubic centimeter, that's a milliliter. Get the idea? Pretty bright, right? Now, guys, there's another unit um, that we also use for measuring metric volumes, and those are liters. That's this. This is a liter, two of these, and you got a bottle of Dr. Pepper. But guys, just one second. So here's the way they figured out the liter. So guys, this is a meter. And if you break it down into 10 parts, you're going to find out at the bottom of your page, that's called a decimeter. Deci means, is that on there? Oh, good. See where it says deci means tenth down at the bottom? Aha. So guys, this is a decimeter. Guess what? A meter or a liter is a decimeter by a decimeter by a decimeter. So that would be a cubic decimeter. So cubic decimeters and liters are the same thing. Go ahead. Are you sure? Come on. Yeah, and the reason is because they're cubic relationships. I just about hit you with my stick. Um, so the idea is that you know that there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, right? I think that's what you're calling on. But 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. So the reason that relationship is a little more complicated is because we're talking about cubic, cubic spaces. Are we good? You guys good on volume? Okay, so how do we measure these things? Guys, we do it with graduated cylinders 
or with rulers. So imagine this. Imagine that we wanted to know the volume of this box. Well, in the English system, we're stuck. We can't grab a yardstick and come along and go, this box is 21 inches by 12 inches by 13 inches. We can't multiply all those together and go, it's four gallons. There is not a relationship like that. But guys, guess what we can do? We can measure 33 centimeters, and we can measure 52 centimeters, and we can measure 30 centimeters, and multiply those together, and now we know the volume in what units? Milliliters. See, so guys, you can't do that in the English system. You can't convert from length to gallons. But in the metric system, you can measure in centimeters, multiply them all together, and you get milliliters. So, guys, understand, with the metric system, we can not only use graduated cylinders, we can also use rulers. You good on that one? Okay. So, ooh, did I give the... Oh, good, good, good. Oh, wait a second. We skipped over it. Maybe we should have talked about this. Guys, down below your table here, see where it says volume? I should have mentioned... You guys all know what volume is? I kind of already talked about it, but what is it? It's an amount of space. If you don't know that, you may want to write that down. Guys, volume is an amount of space. How big something is. How much space does it take up? Okay. So while we're down there, let's talk about weight because that's the next thing that's going to come up on our little ditty here. So guys, if you've taken physics, you probably know the definition or you should. What's the definition of weight? Force of gravity. So guys, you may want to write this down if you didn't know that. Guys, weight is the force of gravity on an object. Weight is the force of gravity pulling on an object. So let's talk about it. If you want to know how much I weigh, you would ask, what do I weigh? And I would give you the answer back, 177 pounds. Because guys, our units are things like ounces and pounds. But these aren't the units we're going to use. Guys, we're going to use the metric units for weight, which are what? Not the gram. Let me lead you to it. Ready? Who discovered gravity when the apple hit him on the head? Newton. And guys, that is the unit for the metric unit for weight. It's the Newton. Named after our good friend Sir Isaac because he's the first person that really probed into this idea of gravity. So guys, this then brings up an interesting question. How do we weigh something? What unit what what devices do we use? to weigh something. Well, guys, when I get up in the morning, and I actually do this every Friday morning, and I go into the bathroom and I step on the thing, the scale, let's just put it up here, the scale. When I step on the scale, we need to talk about how scales work. So guys, whether this is a digital scale or an electronic scale, doesn't matter. When I get on the scale, what's going on inside that thing? Do you know? Okay, so we're pushing kind of, but what are we pushing against? Let me let you in on the secret. Guys, there's a spring in there. When you step on a scale, there's actually a bottom plate that sits on the floor and the top plate that you step on. And when you step on that thing, you're pushing a spring. If it's an analog scale, the spring smush causes a needle to go around. If it's a digital scale, there's a little thing in there that measures how much the spring compresses and that tells you your weight. But guys, there's another way that we can do this. Rather than through compression, we can also take the spring and pull on it. So if, for example, I want to know the weight of my, my stapler, guys, this is also a scale. But instead of compressing, we're pulling. And you'll notice that, I know you can't see this, but the units are actually newtons because this is a scale. And we hang this on there. And we then find out that this is about two newtons. Uh, yes, but you kill it. 
actually I'd probably fall over trying to hold the other end. So, but guys, this is how a scale works. You guys good on that one? Scales? Okay. So now let's really confuse this and let's talk about mass. Go down to the bottom and let's define it. See it down there? What is mass? Because it doesn't have anything to do with gravity. It is an amount of matter. How much stuff is there? So mass is an amount of matter. So guys, ready for an interesting comparison? When an astronaut goes into space, is she weightless or massless? Weightless, why? Because gravity's gone away, not completely. There is still some gravity even in orbit in space. But guys, astronauts become weightless. If they became massless, they would cease to exist. That's bad. So guys, understand that weight and mass, mass is an amount of matter, weight is gravity pulling on that. So now let's talk. Guys, let's now figure out units for mass. So if I'd asked you at the beginning of the day, what is the English unit for mass? You would have said the pound. But now you understand that pounds are gone, so it can't be pounds. So what's the English unit for mass? Not the gram, that's metric. You don't even know, it's, it's the slug. Yeah, seriously, it's the slug. So ready for your little history lesson? Where did that come from? If any of you are a black powder deer hunter, we're in the middle of the season right now, right? If you have a black powder rifle, this already makes sense. Because black powder rifles don't shoot bullets. What do they shoot? Slugs. Guys, that round, so you're thinking Civil War, Gettysburg, the gray and the blue lined up, get the muzzle loader ready to go, ready, aim, fire. And guys, they are shooting slugs at each other. They're not shooting bullets, they're shooting slugs. Remember where the English system came from? Like historic Britain. And back in the day when all of the rifles were muzzle loaders, they were muskets, they needed a unit for mass. And all of their muskets had the same caliber, the same diameter hole inside of the barrel. And that meant that all of the slugs, the bullets, were the same size. So they said, we're going to take this ball of lead and we are going to use it as our standard for mass. And because that's called the slug, we ended up with the slug. Get the idea? There you go. Things that Reggie Reese never told you in your history classes. Okay, so guys, what about the metric system? Well, guys, this is the gram. So you ready for a really deep thought? It's actually, it's not even in our notes, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. Guys, how much is a gram? <laughs> a gram. In the dictionary under redundant, it says see redundant. Um, so guys, how much is a gram? You ready for the answer? A milliliter of water. Guys, a gram is defined as one milliliter of water. You starting to get the feeling that the metric people were thinking and the English people were clueless? Yeah. See guys, that is the definition of a gram. It's one milliliter of water. So if you take this little box and fill it with water, it's a gram. It's, a gra it's mass is one gram. Pretty slick, right? So no, because it's not full of water. This is hollow plastic, so it would be less than a gram. But if this were full of water, it would have the mass of a gram. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so guys, now you're really stuck, right? Because if I'd ask you at the beginning of the day, how do you measure mass, you would have said a scale. But scales measure weight, so how do we measure mass? Triple beam balance. Guys, this is done with a balance. So what's the difference? And guys, the answer is this. I just wrote down a couple words so that you could keep them separated. Guys, scales work with springs. Balances work through comparison. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is what is called a triple beam balance. 
So how does this thing work? Well, the way that it works is we take the thing that we want to find the mass of and we put it over here. Then as the name implies, we have three beams and on these beams are standard masses. We know the mass of these things. And then what we do is we slide these things around until, whoa, stay put. We slide these things around until this thing balances. Once it balances, we now know, and it's called that balanced, we now know that this mass is equal to this mass. By comparison, that's what balance tells us, that this mass is equal to that mass, and now we just read the mass and we find out the mass of the stapler. Now, you ready for this? What if we send this into space? Does it still give us the same answer? It does. Yeah, how? Guys, is there gravity in space? A little. It's not the same. So your weight goes down. It's less. But there is still gravity. And because there's still gravity, this balance will still work perfectly because the gravity will be less equally on both sides, it still allows comparison and it will still work in space. Crazy, right? So now you guys ready for the $11,000 question? What about in lab? Those $350 weighing thingies that you've got on your, on your countertops in there, are those scales or are they balances? What do they measure in, grams or ounces? Grams. So if they measure in grams, what do they have to be? A balance. And they are. How do they work? Well, guys, if you were to open up one of those balances, and please don't do this, but if you could open up one of, those, one of these balances, what you would see is underneath that pan, there's a hole. And in the hole, there's a plunger that goes down in there that's connected to the pan. And when you put your weighing boat on that pan, it pushes down on one side of a little lever. And when it pushes down on that side of the lever, there's actually a sensor, a digital sensor on the other side of the lever that actually senses how much this is pushing down and figures out what mass that must represent on the other end of the lever. So it doesn't have truly a triple beam in there or something like that, but it replaces this side with electronics and still functions as a balance. That's why they're so expensive. Go ahead. It would, but you'd have to calibrate it first. You'd have to tell it you're in a new gravitational field. It's, there's actually, if you ever look on there's there's a menu. And all you have to do is reset at zero point and it'll work anywhere. Yeah. Yep. You guys good? All right. So guys, we got two more to go. Temperature. Here in the U.S. of A., we use Fahrenheit. Guys, I will share with you later where the Fahrenheit scale came from, but we're not going to use it. We're going to use the Celsius scale and the Kelvin scale. Guys, the Celsius and Kelvin scales are actually exactly the same. The only difference is they have a different zero point. So just to be clear, guys, thinking Celsius right now, we'll pick up Kelvin later. Thinking Celsius, what happens at zero Celsius? Water freezes. What happens at 100 Celsius? Water boils. Okay, so just to give you a frame of reference then, what is the temperature of this room right now in Celsius? It's about 25 degrees. Okay. It's about 25 degrees. When you start getting into the 30s, it starts feeling warm. When you hit the 40s, we're talking like Saudi Arabia hot. Okay, like 105 in that area. So room temperature is about 23 to 25 degrees. And guys, of course, we use a thermometer to measure this. So now that you've given up all hope on the English system, we finally got one of these right. What are the units for time? Seconds. All the way across. We couldn't screw this one up because it wasn't our idea. Understand, none of this is our fault. It was the British system. It came over on the Mayflower, and we just decided to stick with it. Oh, yeah. 
And guys, we measure this with a stopwatch. All right. So guys, there you have it. So now let's do this. One, one, one more thing we need to talk about with metrics. And then guys, we're going to get into our last concept. You'll put this on the back of your notes and then we'll call it a day. So wait for it. Uh, here we go. All right. So guys, here's what you're going to be doing in about 10 minutes. You are going to be given a laundry list of objects and you are going to be asked to figure out how would you make this measurement and what units would you use? Let me give you a for example. Say that one of the things you're being asked to measure is the length of this pencil. So the thought process goes like this. If I'm going to measure length, and now that I know that English is evil, I'm going to go with metrics. So what are my metric units for length? Meters. So, and you're welcome to do this. You're welcome to come up and grab my meter stick. And you're going to hold this up here. And what is the length of this pencil in meters? No idea. Why not? The units are too big, right? If this is zero and that's one, this is worthless. So guys, this is where the metric system gets even better because you understand that a meter is not an appropriate unit to measure the length of a pencil. We need smaller units. So guys, now in the metric system, you can start making these smaller simply by adding prefixes. So if a meter is too big, let's break it down into tenths. Look at the paper at the bottom of your page. Look at the table at the bottom of your paper. No, not a, yeah, right there at the bottom. Guys, let's take a meter and break it into tenths. What do we call these? Deci meters. I would propose to you that this is still too big. So let's take this meter and let's break it into hundredths. What do we call it? Centimeter. I would suggest that we're getting closer, but we might even be able to do better. What if we break this into thousands? Millimeters. And now we're talking something that just might work and we're on the order of like 190 millimeters. Now, what if we needed something even smaller? What about 10 thousandths? There isn't one. What about 100 thousandths? There isn't one. After a thousand, it starts going by thousands. So if you need something smaller than milli, you got to go all the way down to, do you see the next one there? Here, let me bring this up in case you're not sure what I'm saying. So guys, if you ain't got milli, you end up having to go all the way down to micro. Now guys, we can't even picture that. Imagine each one of these little lines broken into a thousand parts, a thousand thousands. We are not going to measure the length of a pencil in micrometers. So what do we measure the length of in micrometers? Like bacteria, very, very small things. But guys, there's stuff smaller than bacteria. So what if we need something smaller than micro? Then we go down to nano. What do we measure in nanometers? The distance between atoms. But sometimes that's even too big. So guys, where do we go finally? It's down here and it's the angstrom. Did I put that in your notes? Yeah. Oh, I'm so good. Guys, the thing below this is an angstrom. And an angstrom is a billion, it's, a, it's 10 to the negative 10th meters. It's a 10th of a nanometer. Now guys, understand it's not a metric prefix. You can't have a nanoliter, or I'm sorry, you can't have an angstrom liter. You can't have 10 to the negative 10th of anything other than meters, and it's just called the angstrom. And the abbreviation is an A with a halo on top. Get the idea? Okay, now what about this? What about instead of measuring the length of a pencil, what if we want to measure the distance from here to the University of Utah? Meters? One, two, that ain't gonna work. So guys, what are we gonna do now? Well, now we need something bigger than the whole. And guys, you may wanna write this in. The whole unit is right there between kilo and deci. But guys, if we need more than the whole unit, then we go with kilo. 
Now guys, understand if you've done physics or in other places, you probably understand that there are other bigger units. There are things like mega and deca and all these other, we don't worry about that in chemistry. Kilo is all we need to know bigger than the unit. You guys groovy? Okay, so guys, what about this? What if we want to measure, uh, what would be a good one? Let's go mass. What if we want to measure the mass of a hair? Well, what units are we going to use for mass? Look at your notes. What units do we use? Grams, right? But a gram is a milliliter of water. That's a lot more than a hair. So what are we going to do with the gram? Well, we could go decigrams. So a tenth of this, still a little too heavy. What about centigrams? Maybe. What about milligrams? Thousands of a gram, probably more. What about micrograms? Could be, depends on, <laughs> my hair's not very thick anymore. So maybe mine would be milligrams and maybe Gracie's would be, actually mine might be micrograms and Gracie's could be milligrams because her hair's more than mine. So it just depends on what you're measuring. But guys, you can put these prefixes on any measurement. You get the idea? All right, so guys, one more thing to do and I'm gonna get out of your hair and you're gonna get your homework done. So guys, now what we're gonna do is this. Going back to this page, we are now going to focus in here. We are going to talk about mass and amount of matter, and we're going to talk about volume and, and amount of space. And when we put those two dudes together, we get density. So guys, I got you. I still got you. Oh, she's got you. There we go. So guys, we're going to talk about density. Get this, take your paper, flip it over on the back, write it down. Density. So guys, what is density? It is, exactly. You guys, but conceptually it's this. Density is a measure of the compactness of matter. How squished together it is. But as Marcos and I think others of you already know, it's actually mathematically a ratio of mass to volume. Guys, remember what you learned. Mass is an amount of matter. Volume is an amount of space. So mathematically, it looks like this. Density is mass divided by volume. All right. So guys, now let's talk. What are our units for mass? If you don't know, flip your paper over. What are our units for mass? Grams. What are our units for volume in the metric system? Milliliters, centimeters cubed, decimeters cubed, liters. Guys, we are going to use the smaller of those. So our units for density are going to be grams per milliliter. How many grams of stuff in how many milliliters of space? But we could also use this, grams per centimeter cubed. But guys, what do you now know about those two things? They're the same, because milliliters and centimeters cubed are the same. You guys good? So now let's play with the concept. I just about killed a girl doing this a few years ago. Actually, it was about 20 years ago. Her name was Ashley. I still remember her name. Um, so guys, this is the idea. Reinforcing the idea of density. I'm not Mr. Ellingford, so I'm not going to make one of these disappear, but check this out. Guys, we've got two cubes. What do these cubes, given everything you just learned, what do these two cubes have in common? They have, good, they have the same volume. Guys, they are the same size. These things have the same volume. Does that mean they have the same density? And here's why. This is made of aluminum. This is why they make 
baseball bats and bicycle frames out of aluminum because aluminum is relatively low density. Guys, I throw this thing around and it's really kind of light like a feather. I'll have it up here, you're welcome to play with it. It's kind of surprisingly light. This on the other hand is made of, let's pretend that didn't happen, made of brass. This thing is like, holy smokes. And about now 20 years ago, I had this student named Ashley and she's like, really? Is it really that much lighter? And I said, yeah, here, check it out. And I threw it to her and she went to catch it and missed. <laughs> that was bad. Oh yeah, that was sort of the end of the day. So guys, so let's talk. So do they have the same volume? You bet. Do they have the same mass? No, this one has got more stuff in it. It's more massive. And as a result, which one's more dense, brass or aluminum? Brass is more dense. Now guys do this. What do these two objects have in common? They're both aluminum. Guys, this is an aluminum block. It's solid the whole way through. This is actually what is called um, aluminum wool. This is still aluminum, but it's obviously not solid the whole way through. Now here's the thing, you understand they're both aluminum, but guys, here's the thing you also need to understand. They have the same mass. If I were to put this on the balance and give you the mass, and if I were to put this and put it on the balance, they have the same mass. How can that be? How can they have the same mass? Exactly. David said it very well, because this one's more compact. So guys, they have the same mass, but do they have the same density? No, and now the reason is because, as David said, this one's more compact and this one isn't. So which one's more dense, the block or the wool? You get the idea? Okay, so guys, understand then the density really is that relationship between mass and volume. So in addition to the concept, you've got to be able to handle these things mathematically. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to actually solve a couple problems where you're going to be calculating density. Now guys, let me tell you right now, this is what you're going to be doing kind of, this will be the last step, but this is what you're going to be doing in lab on, on Tuesday. So let's talk. So guys, here's question number one. It says this, you got a metal block. It weighs 100 grams. Its volume is 8.81 centimeters cubed. The question is this, if this block is made out of an element, what is it? You're gonna like this, this is pretty good. So guys, let me explain to you the problem solving strategy here. What we've gotta do is we've gotta figure out the density of this block. So play along with me. If we're gonna find the density, we need the density equation. Guys, please just get used to this. Don't miss these points on the labs and the tests. Write down your equations. You never have to memorize them. I'll give them to you. Write them down. So guys, density is mass divided by volume. What is the mass of our block? 100 grams. What is the volume of our block? 8.81 centimeters cubed. Grab your calculators and do the math and guys, when you do, watch significant digits. I'll give you the answer. And then we'll talk. So 100 divided by 8.81. So guys, let's talk significant digits. How many significant digits in 100.0? Four. Four. The zero is significant, final zero after the decimal. Those dudes are trapped, that's four. How many significant digits in 8.81? Three, so how many do you get in your answer? Three, but if you just wrote down 11.4, it's still wrong, because you need the units, grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, so now guys, we know the density of the block. Now we're gonna figure out what it is. Guys, grab your periodic tables, get them up in your hands and let's chat. So guys, what I need to do is pick this stuff up. There we go. 
So guys, check out my laser. So periodic table, right? If you look down in the very lower left-hand corner of your periodic table, you've got the secret decoder. And if you look down there, and if you look in the bottom left-hand corner of the secret decoder, you'll notice that it says density. You'll also notice that it gives you the temperature because density changes with temperature. Things tend to expand when they get warm and they become less dense. Now, beneath that, you'll notice they give you the units. <sighs> Grams per centimeter cubed, we just kind of learned that. So now we know that the little blue number on the left bottom side of these boxes is the density of all of these elements. And guys, what we could do to figure out what this element is, is we could do a wild goose chase and we could find the element that has a density of 11.4 grams per centimeter cubed. Or I could just put us out of our misery and if you go look at element 82, which is lead, you will notice that its density is 11.34, which is actually the closest element on the periodic table to 11.4. And that would tell us that this substance is lead. Get the idea? By the way, guys, you will be going through a similar process to this on the test. If you ain't got one of these, you stuck. So now, guys, let's do this. One more problem and we're done and you'll get your homework finished today. Sample problem number two reads like this. What is the mass of 1,250 milliliters of aluminum. All right. So guys, here's the question. What is the mass of 1,250 milliliters of aluminum? So here we go, guys. How big is this? It's a liter, which is the same as 1,000 milliliters. So there's 1,000. Each one of these plates is 10 by 10. So 100 and 100, that's 200. Each one of these sticks is 10, so that would be 20, 30, 40, 50. So the question is this. If this were made of aluminum, what would its mass be? So let's figure it out. So we're going to go density is mass divided by volume. Now, guys, read the first four words up on the board. What is the, mass. that's our goal. So if we're solving for mass, we got to know density and we got to know volume. We know the volume, but they don't give us the density. Oh yeah, we do. Right here. Grab your periodic tables. Aluminum is element number 13. It's three rows down and a little bit to the right. Aluminum element number 13 has a density of 2.7 grams per milliliter. Now guys, I've got to fix this. The periodic table that I have on the board or up on the wall actually gives aluminum's density as 2.6989. Um, we have actually replaced all of our periodic tables except for this one. So I'm going to use your data. You know what? I'm just going to do this by hand. Let's do it together. So here we go. Oops. Ah. So guys, the density of aluminum is 2.7 grams per milliliter. Now, we want to know the mass. That is our X. We know the volume. It's 1,250 milliliters. So what do the algebra gods tell us about how to solve this? Cross multiply. So we've got 2.7 times 1250. And then, guys, we get two significant digits in 2.7, three significant digits in 1250. So we get two significant digits. So I get, and I'll just write this out for you, 3375. But to two significant digits, that would be 3,400 grams. Yeah. 
absolutely, you're always welcome to do that. If you wanted to just do the cross multiplication ahead of time and go density times volume is equal to mass, yeah, that's great. Yep. Basically, what you're doing is you're doing the cross multiplication first, and that's fine. All right, guys, you good with the thoughts? Okay, so do this. Grab your homework packets. Hey, so guys, just so you know, today we are on a, uh, uh oh, we're on a pride assembly schedule. Functionally, what that means to you is classes are the same length, but after second period, we're going to go to an assembly and we lose pride. So do this, guys. Go back to assignment number three. And let's do this together. So it looks like this. This is the page you're looking for. Down the left-hand side, as advertised, you've got a bunch of objects. Then, guys, you've got three columns to fill out. Device, chosen units, and estimate. So, guys, let's do this together for the first one. So, for example, the first thing is this, a dime. But it's the thickness of a dime. So, guys, when we measure thickness, we are functionally measuring length. So, we need, first of all, chosen units. Meters? Don't think so. What about decimeters? Still too big. What about centimeters? Still too big. What about millimeters? There we go. So guys, for chosen units, you're going to go millimeters. Go ahead and write it down. We'll do this first one together. Now, we need a device. What device did we just use to measure the thickness of this thing? A ruler or a meter stick. Either one's fine. Now, we need to make an estimate. And guys, you are more than welcome to come up here and you can grab the dime and you can grab this and you can hold this up here and, and you can make the measurement if you want. But what I want you to do is estimate. So if you can picture millimeters and if you can picture the thickness of a dime and you don't even need to have these in your hands maybe, it turns out this is about a millimeter thick. Now, guys, how are we going to grade this on Tuesday? And here's the answer. You have got to pick realistic devices. So if for the thickness of a dime you put a thermometer, that's not okay. Then you've got to pick realistic units. So if you put kilometer, that's obviously also not okay. Guys, we will not grade the estimates column, but when you check your homework, I will give you the correct answers, and they're all based on me, because you'll notice when you get to the bottom, it says things like your weight and your mass and things like that, and they're based on me. Your answers will be different. So, guys, one other thing. Let's talk about this one really quickly. Um, the first one from the bottom, distance to energy solutions arena. Let's do this one right now. What, what device would you use to measure the distance to what we used to call the Delta Center? I would. No, well, those would be our units, right? Kilometers. But guys, what, what device would you use? I'd either look on Google Maps or I'd get in my car and drive. So those are the devices we would use. I would say a map or I would say a car. Notice that that's not one of our devices from your notes, right? So guys, don't get stupid because you're doing science, right? You would actually use a map or a car, so why don't we be realistic about this and go, I'm going to use a map or a car. And then your units, of course, are um, kilometers. And I'm going to let you guess on this one. It might be helpful for you to know there's 1.6 kilometers in a mile which I know very well because every time I watch European cycling, which is every day, I've got to divide everything by 1.6 to figure out how fast they're going and how far they've gone. Why couldn't it just be 1.5 and then the math would be easier? All right. So, oh gosh, we're not quite done. Um, guys, then the last thing is this. You'll notice there's a back to this. You may answer these in the white space down below. I think that's plenty, but there's four density problems. So guys, you now have push in 30 minutes, 
25 minutes to work on this. You are more than welcome to get up and move around. You'll notice that some of these objects are specific to this room, like the volume of my sink. Feel free to play with any of this stuff you want. Get up, move around. Let's get this done so you don't have homework over the weekend. I'll put the answers on the wall. Go get them. <laughs>